Welcome to Drunk Bible Study. This show's mission is to read every single word of the greatest story ever told. A warning to our listeners, the hosts of this show are sinners, but they're doing their best. There will be drinking and there may be some swears. They did say they'd try to keep it clean, but I wouldn't put my money on it. I'm Emily, and this is Drunk Bible Study, where my good friends Dedeker and Jace teach me, a born and raised atheist, all about the Bible. How are you two doing today on this penultimate John day? You're right. It is the pen, pen, John, John yes. day, 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 day. <laughs> Indeed it is. <laughs> Indeed. Are you being like a stadium announcer Ooh. with the like? That's pen, not where I initially day, intended day, to go, day. but that's where it ended up. I love so, that. Yes. Though. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, how Amazing. do I feel coming to almost the end of the entire Gospels? Pretty remarkable. Oh. It's quite an achievement. Right, it's not just John, it's all of them. Yeah. It's all of them. Oh. Yeah, yeah, for sure. My goodness. You know, I was just driving home from a physical therapy appointment earlier today and was thinking about when Emily will sometimes ask these philosophical questions mm. about the Bible mm-hmm. and you'll kind of go off for a little bit kind of talking about them and how... I just like reflexively, instinctually kind of close my eyes and kind of sit back and like, mm, mm-hmm. it's like I, it, it like hits whatever nerve centers of my brain uh-huh. go into, I'm listening to a sermon mode. I'm just going to kind of take it oh. in, just kind of reflect on it. But it's like, it's like, you've got, you've got that. You, you were born for this. Oh gosh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Who knew? You know, that was definitely not something. The seed's been inside you all along. You just needed the Gospels to, mm, to apparently unlock it, unlock it <laughs> yes. let it flourish. There just just enough of the Bible. Yeah. I think uh, it's just been really interesting to finally kind of see where all of these stories came from. And then to think about and reflect on the fact that we still as a society put so much meaning on them that isn't mm. maybe written there. And I'm I'm curious to see what the rest of it is like because I'm sure that that will continue to just happen and maybe the meaning yeah. will come from the next parts of our readings, but who knows? We'll find out. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay, this is an exciting, exciting day. Yeah. It's been hacking on computers all day, but I'm ready to take a break and just really get right with... The Lord? With the Lord. The yes. lady? Yeah. The lady. I think today is get when right we're going to get... The the, yeah. We're going to get the crucifixion today, I'm pretty sure. Sweet. Hell yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do know Pilate's going to show up today, mm. so I assume also we're going to have the crucies today. Yeah. The crucies. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. still have not... Oh, yes. We did cast Pilate. That's Bob Odenkirk. That's pretty good. I still yeah, think I still it's feel, good. I still feel right about that. Yeah, Yeah. he's just going to be there the whole Mm -hmm. time. That's how we're doing it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we're doing this kind of conceptual thing where each of the gospels, we have a different Jesus, but all the other actors stay the same. Yeah. I think it'll be kind of interesting, actually. It's like, yes, they recast Gerald of Rivia in The Witcher. Yes. Yeah. Um, So it's the same thing, but then everybody else is the same. It's very strange. Yeah, this and remember that this Jesus is is Lil Nas X. Oh yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. and again, in case people have forgotten, the most recent entry in our cast list, which you can access too, actually, if you join our Facebook group, the D, the Drunk Bible Study Fans and Fellowship Facebook group. I believe that it's a sticky post where you can access the Google Doc where we have our ongoing cast list. But the last entry in there is that the Holy Spirit will be played by a wisp of smoke slash Mewtwo with Jim Carrey's face. Either composited or motion captured onto it, we're still not sure. Yes, it's still still open for interpretation there. And uh, we'll also put that in the Discord as well, which yeah. you can get to at drunkbiblestudy.com slash Discord. And you join us in both the places and come hang out. I always think of Mewtwo as a more sinister character and Jim Carrey is just more kind of nuts. So it's interesting mm. that that's the case, that he is playing this sort of sinister Mewtwo and sinister Wisp of Smoke. Yes. But you know what? We're stretching. We're stretching it. So I love it. Yeah, we're stretching him. 
We're stretching ourselves, really. Yes. Yeah. And stretching the audience, too. <laughs> yes. Uh, what are you two drinking today? Look oh. at that beautiful little cup. Yeah, what are you drinking, Jace? Oh, well, the highlight of my drink is actually this little cup, which was pottery hand thrown, wow. made at, by my sister. Oh, lovely. Yeah, isn't that sweet? And in it, I'm having a rusty nail. Oh. Which is a fun, a fun old favorite of mine that I don't have very often. It's just scotch and drambuie. Okay. But it just makes for this nice, there's like the complexity and the smokiness, peatiness of the scotch. But then there's this like herbal and slightly sweetness in the drambuie. It's a fun combination. I do recommend it if you go to like an old timey sort of bar. Yeah. You could probably impress some people by ordering a rusty nail. Is that a liqueur? What is it? I've never, what is drambuie? Drambuie, yeah, it's a liqueur. I actually don't even know what makes up a drambuie, to okay. be honest. It's kind of sweetie, fruity, kind of yeah. syrupy yeah. kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, let's see here. It's a, um, it's a mix of scotch, honey, herbs, and spices. Okay. So it's like oh, a little bit it's like, like scotch a, on scotch. It's like a scotch on scotch, yeah. But like the honey and the herbs is more what you get out of it. Nice. Awesome. Um, but yeah, it's nice. It's also one of those alcohol and alcohol kind of cocktails. Yeah, so. no, exactly. So you're like, I'm having a, a little bit. Yeah, I'm strapping yeah. in for alcohol today. forward. Yes. Amazing. I also am just having straight gin on the rocks. I'm having oh, this wow. really interesting. You two are going hard. The moons of Jupiter. It's called the Moons of Jupiter Gin. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's it's got a really interesting kind of little florally, citrusy, ja- honeysuckly, jasminey sort of mm. taste to it. I think it holds up really well, just on the rocks. Personally, that's lovely. Yeah, very cool. And how about you, Em? Yeah, I gotta say this is one of my. I'm I'm not gonna gatekeep this one. I've got to put it up because <laughs> it's one of my favorites that I've made so far. I bought a small watermelon because it's summer here. It's almost summer in New York City. So I bought a watermelon. You filled the whole thing with vodka no. and you're just drinking that straight. <laughs> no, I ended up like carving out all of the pieces of the watermelon and I put it in a blender with a little bit of maple syrup. And then I put oh. the juice into, like I ice cubed it basically. I cubed it and did some. Whoa. Yeah. And I, I made it into kind of a slushy watermelon thing. And then I did put some gin, um, some lime juice, and then also muddled some mint. And I made this beautiful cocktail. It's like a gin smash, tasty watermelon concoction. And it's amazing. A gin smash, tasty watermelon concoction. Maybe mm-hmm. people so in the Discord can help come up with some good names for some of these mm-hmm. cocktails. As much as I love that name and its lengthiness, <laughs> yeah, it could be good to come up with something else. Watermelon smash? I don't know. I, it would be good with some cucumber as well, but I didn't have that, so I kind of had to mm. use what I had. But it still is phenomenal. I highly recommend if you have a watermelon on you, throw it in an icebox after you muddle it up, and it'll be great. Or just fill it with vodka. That's an option, too. That's yeah. true. I did not do that. That sounded a little much. I didn't have any vodka on me either. Yeah. Mm. Okay. That's fair. I usually don't have vodka on me. Yeah. I know that's not your favorite. I also usually don't have watermelons on me, to be fair. Yeah. So. No. It, I just was like, you know what? I'm going to try this. And it worked that out. Sounds good. Swimming late. All righty. Great. We doing this? Yeah. So ready. Yes. Let's do this. So it is the pen ultimate. The pen, 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 pen. Ultimate, ultimate, ultimate. <laughs> day of John and also of all the Gospels. And so today we are reading John chapters 18 and 19. As we get started, we want to remind everyone to read responsibly and drink responsibly. You can drink along with us or you can listen to us while you're in the car. But please do not do both at the same time. And with that, John chapter 18. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where was a garden into which he and his... Yes, we're here. Where was a garden into which he and his disciples entered? Now Judas, who betrayed him, 
also knew the place, for Jesus often resorted there with his disciples. Oh, it was a freaking resort. Oh, resorted there. (laughs) He was out there with his sunglasses on and the beach Uh, loungers under the olive trees. I do love that. Mm -hmm. Was this during the summer when he got crucified? I have no idea. Mm, Like, is it resort season? Is what you're saying? Like, is it a hot Christ summer? Because I'm pretty sure that that's generally how it's depicted is that it's quite warm outside, right? Hmm. I don't know. I don't remember at all. I mean, it's never depicted like it was snowing or anything. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to look into that while you keep reading. Okay. Okay. Judas then, having taken a detachment of soldiers and officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all the things that were happening to him, went forth and said to them, what are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am. (laughs) Judas also, who betrayed him, let us not forget. (laughs) Cannot forget that. Yes, we know. (laughs) Judas also, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When therefore he said to them, I am, they went backward and fell to the ground. Why? He just like knocked him over with the force. That's cool. That's really cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that makes me want to play some KOTOR or something. Yeah. Again, therefore, he asked them, who are you looking for? He's kind of doing like a, why are you hitting yourself? (laughs) Goodness. Uh, They said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. If therefore you seek me, let these go their way. It's like he has the... Yes? No, I just, it's like he has the, what is it? The dragon speak in Skyrim. That knocks oh, them yes. over. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he's doing right now. It's cool. Yes. I remember the first time I played that game and like when you first get the dragon speak, huh. uh, that yeah. like, like I was having trouble getting it to trigger. Mm. And I was like, like, how do I, I can't get it to go. It's like that one point where they're like, okay, try it. Right. And I'm yeah. like, I can't get it to go. Can't get it to go. And then when I finally got it to go, I like killed one of the NPCs that was <laughs> And then everybody me. tried to murder no, you. No, the other NPCs didn't give any shits. They oh, were okay. just like, wow, yeah, that's the dragon speak. Wow. <laughs> like, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> did not care Amazing. at all. Wow. That's great. They're like, yeah, okay. that's, that was, that's on us. We asked you to do the dragon speak. <laughs> that's, that's on us. And you did. (laughs) Okay. That the word might be fulfilled, which he spoke. Of those whom you have given me, I have lost none. I don't understand that at all. Can you cross-reference with with the message, please? Yeah. So in the message, it says, so I told you that's me. I'm the one. So if it's me you're after, let these others go. And then it says in parentheses, this validated the words in his prayer, quote, I didn't lose one of those you gave. Uh, I, I still don't understand. Okay. That's weird. So what's happening here? Is he being arrested right now? Is that I, the deal? I believe so. They're trying to. So I guess it's like he somehow said a prayer that he t- maybe told God that he wouldn't lose one of those that you gave, meaning the disciples. So he's like, I didn't get them arrested or killed. It was just maybe. me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why he's saying like, let the rest of these, let them go. Just take me. Yeah, that's got to okay. be. I didn't, guess that makes sense. In one of the stories, didn't Judas kiss him? Did he make out yes, with them? Yes, that was the yeah. signal. But he didn't do yeah. it here. But this one, he just kind of this one. showed up. He also he didn't, like, we didn't get a prayer, did we, in this one? No, there was no Gethsemane or anything. Yeah, they just went to a resort and had a great time yeah. until the cops showed up. Yeah, he, Jesus wasn't anguishing at all. He was just like, yeah, it's going to happen. Uh-huh. What the heck? Huh. That makes I him... I mean, maybe there's still time for anguish. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll okay, see. Okay, maybe. That makes him a much less, like, fully fleshed out character, in my opinion, but whatever. We have established that in this book, Jesus talks much more like, I am God. Yeah, he's kind of and a so one-trick pony. That character would be less afraid. Remember in the first gospel that we read, mm-hmm. Emily, you were kind of like, what's Jesus's deal? Like, he seems, you know, selfish or, or being reckless or something. And... I was talking to you about how like, well, but you're interpreting that as Jesus being this kind of all-powerful God person. Yeah. And now- but In those books, he's not really, but now he kind of is. And so- Yeah, and now I'm like, here. this isn't as interesting as that other Jesus that was more, I, I don't know, like a man, like a normal person. And he had more layers hmm. to him, more complexity sure. internally. Yeah. Well, speaking of complexity, Simon Peter, therefore, having a sword, 
drew it, oh. and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. Cool. The servant's name was Malchus. We get more detail oh, each time. That's nice. Badass. <laughs> Poor Malchus. It, did we know that that was Simon Peter before? I thought it was just someone cut off someone's ear. I think that got mentioned in another gospel, maybe, or maybe I knew that this gospel mm. named it as Simon Peter. And so it was always Peter in my head. He was the rash one, the one who, okay. you know, Magnus rushes in style. He's definitely rash. Right, that right. just swords a swing in. <laughs> Jesus, therefore, said to Peter, put the sword into its sheath. The cup which the Father has given me, shall I not surely drink it? Oh, that's kind of like a little a little riff on what we would be getting from the Gethsemane prayer of where mm. he's like, Father, take like... Really? Take this cup from me. Take this cup or? from me. Yes. But here he is like, I'll drink the cup. Yeah. He's like, no we've worries. been doing shots all night. Why stop now? <laughs> I'll take this shot of arresting and death. Awkward. So the detachment, the commanding officer, and the officers of the Jews seized Jesus and bound him and led him to Annas first. For he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. Oh. Everyone knows you take it to the dudes in charge's Father-in-law? Yeah, of course. (laughs) First. Definitely. (laughs) Now, it was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it was expedient that one man should perish for the people. Okay, so pinning it on Caiaphas, I suppose. Hmm. Simon Peter followed Jesus, as did another disciple. Who knows? (laughs) We only talk about Simon Peter. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> now, that disciple was known to the high priest and entered in with Jesus into the court of the high priest, but Peter was standing at the door outside. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to her who kept the door and brought in Peter. Her? Then, Oh, so he's the, like, it's cool. He's with me. Like, yeah. He can come in. And their garden is a woman. That is interesting that female pronouns were used. Yeah. Yeah. The huh. maid who kept the door said to Peter, Are you also one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. Oh shit. That was one of the one of the denials. Uh Strike one. Cockadoodle doo boy. Yeah, he is the (laughs) cockadoodle doo boy. It's so funny to me because they really don't talk about basically any of the other disciples except for Simon Peter and Judas. By name at least. That's true. Yeah. And they're the two worst boys, I would say. (laughs) (laughs) Huh. I feel like Simon Peter is usually portrayed as like one of the star boys. He tries to be, but I feel like he's trying too okay. hard. Sure, sure. He's, he's really annoying, actually. He's always the the one who messes up, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's just a little mm-hmm. too earnest. <sighs> it's gross. Now, <laughs> the servants and the officers were standing there, having made a fire of coals, for it was cold. Okay, that's a cue about... Some oh. kind of season. It was cold. It was oh. cold. Yeah. Or at least it was cold. Maybe it was nighttime. I assume it's nighttime. It's like in Legend of Zelda but when it gets not. really cold at, in Gerudo Valley at night. And then during right. the day, it's just sweltering. Like Los Angeles. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or any Tucson. desert, I guess. Yeah. Yes. They were warming themselves. Peter was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest, therefore, asked Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues and in the temple where the Jews always meet. I said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. Behold, these know the things which I said. Except for the times in the other gospels where he did teach in secret kind of and told people like, don't tell people about me. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That is very different. Hmm. Yeah. When he had said this, one of the officers standing by slapped Jesus with his hand saying... Do you answer the high priest like that? Jesus answered him, if I've spoken evil, testify of the evil. But if well, why do you beat me? Now, okay, hold on. Can we read some translations of that? Yes, we can. Uh, Let's start with Tyndale here. Jesus answered him, if I have evil spoke, bear witness of ye evil. If I have spoke well, why smitest thou me? Seriously. Mm. It's cute. I like that. Uh, although I think Eugene might have the trophy for best translation where he says, if I've said something wrong, prove it. But if I've spoken the plain truth, why this slapping around? <laughs> oh, I was really hoping he would use the phrase bitch slap, but... Mm, I don't know might... if he's allowed to swear. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Eugene is allowed to swear. As much as we would like him to. Yeah. Anas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the, I guess, the actual high priest. Right. Now... 
Simon Peter was standing and warming himself, as we established. Mm -hmm. They said, therefore, to him, you aren't also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. I'm not a little Tommy Wiseau cameo. I'm not. Wait, wasn't Tommy Wiseau... Jesus? He was Jesus, yeah, yeah, in one of the previous Gospels. And Mark. Hi, Mark. Yeah. Wait a minute, yeah. wouldn't that be weird if he came back as Simon Peter in oh, a different one? That'd be pretty funny, that actually. That would be really cool. <laughs> I am not. Okay. I'm not. Now, that it's would not be not true. I'm not his disciple. I am not. If Maybe if all the Jesuses played Simon Peters in other Gospels. Whoa, oh, cute. That could be an interesting twist. Yeah, that would cute. be a weird okay. twist. What's, what are we trying to say to the, when we're doing this? Like, what artistic choice? Well, or what if it was just like what American Horror Story was doing for a while, and I think a couple mm. of other modern TV shows have done, where each season it's the same cast, but yeah. completely different roles yeah, sure. and different totally. stories. Yeah. Yeah, I like yeah. it. This is the same story, though. One of the servants of the high priest, being a relative of him whose ear Peter had cut off, <laughs> said... <laughs> Awkward. Hey, bitch. <laughs> did, 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 now, did this guy know that his relative had had his ear cut off yet? Uh, no, he does, because he asked, didn't I see you in the garden with him? So he oh, was there. It's like, weren't you the dude that <laughs> cut off my, my cousin's ear? Why would you do that <laughs> if you weren't with this guy? <laughs> Peter, Peter's therefore, like, uh, I got one of those faces. It just is. <laughs> Peter therefore denied it again. Wow! And immediately, the rooster boy. crowed. Yes, yeah. there it is. Yeah, they led Jesus therefore from Caiaphas into the Praetorium. It was early, and they themselves didn't enter into the Praetorium that they might not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. So that's a pit of culture that I'm oh, not familiar with. Yeah. Pre, what and what is a praetorium? Like a place in which to pray? Um, probably not. An auditorium no. for prayer. No. Okay. Well, yeah. Let's see here. It's um, the official residence of an ancient Roman governor. So Pilate's house. Governor. His like the White House, but for Pilate. Uh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this says in the the Message Bible, it says they led him into the Roman governor's palace. They themselves didn't enter the palace because they didn't want to be disqualified from eating the Passover. Okay. Yeah, okay, there's some means. Jewish rules that I'm not familiar with here. Yeah. Is it like if you're going into the house of someone who wears clothing made out of mixed fibers, that will also cause you to be unclean? Or if you go into the house of people who eat shellfish, or if you go into the house of people who are actively having sex with five other people at the same time, then you can't have Passover. I think I read that in the Old Testament Wait, somewhere. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know if how the Romans do. Orgy, then you can't <laughs> yeah. have <a> Passover. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I don't. Hmm. Okay. Pilate therefore went out to them and said, "What accusation do you bring against this man?" They answered him, "If this man weren't an evildoer, we wouldn't have delivered him up to you." <laughs> Well, that's kind of a tautology. It's like, we'll all be the judge of that. Yeah. yeah. Pilate therefore said to them, take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. I've got an orgy. I got to get back to you, y'all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> therefore, the Jews said to him, it is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. Uh, again, that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spoke, signifying by what kind of death he should die. What? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, you heard what I said. <laughs> Okay, can I tell you about why they wouldn't go into the praetorium? Yes, tell me. Yeah. It's because during Passover, Jews would not enter the homes of Gentiles. Oh, so it's just being a Gentile at all. Wow. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Makes total sense. Because that would make them become unclean and therefore couldn't attend the feast because everyone has to have been clean for the week or whatever of Passover. Sure, dang. Okay. Pilate, therefore, entered again into the praetorium, called Jesus and said to him... Are you the king of the Jews? I really do imagine Pilate like putting clothes on, you know, trying to fix his hair. Okay. Jesus answered him, do you say this by yourself or did others tell you about me? Pilate answered, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests delivered you to me. What have you done? <laughs> oh, he is so over it <laughs> in this version. Dang. I do, I do so think Bob it. Odenkirk's a really good casting yes. for Pilot. <laughs> oh, though. for sure. Like, yeah. I just think he could really play that whole like a little bit likable, a little bit not likable. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like, yes. Ugh, why am I in this situation? Yeah, why uh-huh. is this happening? <laughs> yes. Jesus answered, 
my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would fight, that I wouldn't be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? <laughs> Jesus so answered. Over is really done. He's like, can you please just leave and I don't have to do anything with you? Uh-huh. Uh, Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. For this reason, I've been born. And for this reason, I have come into the world that I should testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? <laughs> Whoa. Deep, deep. Right? Yeah. 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 Love it. When he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no basis for a charge against him, but you have a custom that I should release someone to you at the Passover. Therefore, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Release? Yeah, we've encountered this before. Like as in, like pardon somebody. Oh, but they're not going to pardon him. Or release... A prisoner. No, that we know well, that that's they're what not. He's, oh, yeah, and they release a different prisoner. Is that yes. the, yeah, yeah, okay, I remember. It's just weird, though, that it's just like the way that John's telling this story is so weird, where they bring him in, it and they're like, weird. this guy's bad. We want him killed, but we can't do it. You got to do it. And then he comes back out. He's like, I don't find anything wrong. I can pardon someone, though. Do you want me to pardon him instead of kill him? And they're, and they're like, like, no. No, no. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. I really think he is just, he needs to get back to that orgy. He's, He's just really doing anything it. I can to yeah. wrap this up as soon mm-hmm. as possible. Then they all shouted again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a robber. <laughs> That's the end of the chapter. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Now Barabbas was a robber. Why are you why are you blown away by this, Jace? Because the other translations are very different. Really? Oh, what does it say? Yeah. So in the New International Version, it says, now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. Huh. And then in the uh, Message Bible, as well as the Complete Jewish Bible, it says that he was a freedom fighter for the Jews or a revolutionary. Oh, he was a real people's hero. Yeah, so he was imprisoned by the Romans because he was in part of an uprising as part of the Jews. So that's a very different story than him just being a robber, which is how it's been before. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, King James still has him as a robber, but then more modern translations have him as a a freaking revolutionary. And we have John Dolph the Mike in the chat here saying that the Greek word, I'm not going to try to read it, can mean robber, brigand, bandit, or rebel. So like, I I guess some people interpret this later. That's fine. I'll, I'll, I will, you know. Now, Barabbas does, was a He's rebel. the Che Guevara of the Jews. Sure. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's right. a rebel right. without a cause. Well, but he does have a cause, though. He did have a cause, Whatever. it sounds like. Did he? <laughs> what was his cause? <laughs> Freeing the Jews Jewish from liberation, being ruled I'm by assuming. Romans. Wait, yeah. Barabbas? Barabbas. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? Cool. (laughs) Okay, time for a break. Okay, yes, it's time for a break. We would love for you to take this moment right now to text your best friend and tell them (laughs) about this show. Or text maybe your mom if your mom can hang with this show. Or like our moms. Like my mom. (laughs) Like our moms. Well, my mom has not. My mom mom can hang. Emily's mom can hang. Jace's mom can't hang with this show, unfortunately. Yeah, I think she wants to hang, but she just can't bring herself. She's too afraid of sacrilege. And so, oh, you know, it's I get sacrilegious. That. I mean, sure, sacrilegious. Yikes. <laughs> but if any of you out there have a cool family member or friend who you think could handle a little sacrilege, but in a, like a, a kind hearted way, in a fun way, I like, I like to think, yeah, we're fun, we're a little critical, but like not in a mean way. We're not trying to talk shit, no. but just kind of, it's fun critical reading really, is really a good old way books. Of looking at it. Yeah. yeah. We're critiquing yeah. slash questioning. It's good. Right, right. And we're not questioning the real people who are characters in the book because we don't know them, but we are critiquing the writers don't sometimes because we do at least have a relationship to the writers by reading their words. Anyway, go spread the word. We would love it. Of course, you know, post about it on social media. Tell your friends. Put a banner up on the side of your apartment building. Uh, you know, whatever you got. Maybe make a DBS flag. Hang that in your yard. Get people to ask you what that's about. 
Please. Yeah, there's a lot of cool options for how you could help promote the show. And then, of course, if you would like to help us keep doing this show, become one of our patrons. We don't do any advertising on this show, so we are entirely sponsored by people's donations through our Patreon, which you can go to patreon.com slash drunk Bible study to join that. And as a parishioner, we will thank you by showering you with gifts such as a personal toast on the show, uh, Emily's drink recipes, early releases of episodes, and of course, our love and adoration. John chapter 19. So, Pilate then took Jesus and flogged him. Oh, he She's just like, well, he was like, well, okay, I guess I'm killing this guy. <laughs> exactly. That was quick. Oh, and flogging at first, I guess. Just to get things warmed up, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The soldiers twisted thorns into a crown and put it on his head and dressed him in a purple garment. They kept saying, "Hail, King of the Jews." And they kept slapping him. He's like, don't slap me. Oh, because he'd complained about it earlier. So they're like, oh, you like that? Yeah, okay. Yes. Then Pilate went out again and said to them, Behold, I bring him out to you that you may know that I find no basis for a charge against him. Jesus therefore came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple garment. Pilate said to them, Behold, the man. The man. (laughs) God. When, therefore, the chief priests and the officers saw him, they shouted, saying, Crucify! Crucify! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no basis for a charge against him. So Pilate's, like, not a bad guy in this scenario. I mean, he did flog him and slap him and do some mean things, but then he's kind of like, I don't think that we should be doing this. I mean, he didn't put a stop to it, and that's a problem, but Yeah, we've talked about that in the past, where he's not actively bad, but he's sort of a little bit of this passive bystander where he also really can't be bothered to actually stand up for this guy. Yeah. There was an interesting line. Let me see if I can find it here. So in the message translation, this is not in the other ones from what I can tell. So... According to the message, it says, the Jews said, we're not allowed to kill anyone, so you need to do it, basically. And so I'm like, is that, why? Why is that? I don't Because it, it's Passover? Or is that just a rule in general? But I wonder, I mean, I'm sure those, all the historians that are in our chat, and I don't say that facetiously. <laughs> um, no, exactly. Somebody tell we'll us. We'll know more about this, but like my armchair historian take on it would be, I'm sure once the Romans stepped into power, they were probably less comfortable giving the Jews their own power to carry out things like executions. Mm, sure. That you would know? make sense. Yeah. yeah I okay. don't really want that. Interesting. Okay. All right. The Jews answered him, we have a law and by our law, he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. Can I ask like, is that real? Is that a thing? Is what real? Like this law that he should die because he made himself the son of God. I mean, I guess this would count. What are they referring heresy, to, right? Or is, is that it? Sacrilege, some kind right? of blasphemy, heresy, and blasphemy. Something. All the all those words. Okay. All the essays. You know, <laughs> I okay. guess. I guess right? I don't know. It just seems a little much. I mean, people presumably are committing adultery left and right, and doing other things as well. Did they die for it? Or are they just kind of making an exception for this one dude? I don't th- I don't think they're making an exception. We read all the Jewish law. We read all the Jewish law in the Old Testament. Like, I don't think they're making an exception because, mm. I mean, we read how low of a bar it is I know it's to a low be bar. executed yeah. or stoned or whatever. Or turned to a pillar of salt by looking around exactly. for just one second, That's one true. freaking <laughs> exactly. second. Yeah. Okay. That's true. I mean, honestly, it seems like their laws are maybe even a little more lax right now because they're not instantly killing anyone who picks up sticks on the Sabbath right. like they used to do. And now it's like a guy was carrying his mattress and they're like, hey, that's against the law. Don't do it. And so maybe maybe they have progressed some. They're actually a little gentler, interestingly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. When, therefore, Pilate heard this saying, he was more afraid. Uh He entered into the praetorium again and said to Jesus, where are you from? And Jesus was like pointing to the sky. (laughs) 
Up there, man. But Jesus there. gave him no answer. Oh. Maybe maybe he did point up, but they didn't couldn't hear that to write it down, yeah. so it didn't make it in. Pilate therefore said to him, "Aren't you speaking to me? Don't you know that I have the power to release you and have power to crucify you?" Jesus answered, You would have no power at all against me unless it were given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me to you has greater sin. Mm -hmm. He who delivered me to you has greater sin. Is that God? What? Yeah. Would Or just Judas. Or maybe it's him. Oh, I thought Judas. She meant Judas. Like, hey, Judas. Judas. Okay. Don't make it bad. Sing a sad song. At this, (laughs) Pilate... At this, Pilate was seeking to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If you release this man, you aren't Caesar's friend. Wow. Shots fired. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) Everyone who makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. Oh, I see. Okay, so they're they're poking him where they know it's going to hurt. Where he's like, this is going to get back to Caesar, that you're maybe supporting an alternate power structure. Right. Someone else who says he's a king. So Caesar was around during this time. Well, yeah, it was Roman Empire. Yeah. Well, remember, it's also a Caesar. Like, that was the title. So, not not necessarily Julius. Yeah. Okay. Or Augustus. That's what I was thinking. A Caesar. I was thinking of the guy in that Shakespeare play of Orange Julius. Yes. You too. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Bruce A. Okay. <laughs> okay. When Pilate, therefore, heard these words, he's like, Whoo. He brought <laughs> Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat. <laughs> the what? <laughs> at a place called the pavement. <laughs> so, hold on. Wait, what? no, no. The it hottest, does not say that. Hottest it does bar. not say that. <laughs> In we have the he pavement. He sat down on the judgment seat at a place called Quote the pavement. The pavement? <laughs> but in Hebrew, yo gabba gabba. <laughs> Sorry, g- gabatha, gabatha, gabatha. What do other people say regarding the pavement? Yeah. The I've never pave. heard of the pavement in my life, other than it, the fact pavements. that it's the hottest bar in WeHo right now. Even though it leads nowhere. <laughs> okay, Eugene calls it. Stone court with the uppercase S, uppercase C. Okay. The stone pavement is what the NIV says. King James says pavement. What's the complete Jewish Bible say? The pavement. Okay. What? Did they like get some concrete up in here? I guess. The pavement. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Sure. The pavement. But in Hebrew, Gabatha. I like that the writer's like, I know that's a stupid name, so I'll give you the Hebrew word for it that's better. Now, it was the preparation day of the Passover. At about the sixth hour, which is noon, he said to the Jews, Behold, your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Whoa. Yeah. I get, they're like playing to his loyalty to yeah, Caesar, sure. I think. Yeah. It's all it's all yeah. con. Yeah. Okay. It, which is ironic, too, that they just had them pardon a revolutionary fighting mm-hmm. against Roman rule in favor of killing Jesus. Seriously. But then they're saying, we have no king but Caesar. It's very strange. Yeah. So then he delivered him to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and led him away. He went out, bearing his cross, to the place called the Place of a Skull. Whoa. Metal. (laughs) Better than the pavement, for sure. Yeah, Yeah. better than the pavement. Which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him, and with two others, on either side one, and Jesus in the middle. Pilate wrote a title also, and put it on the cross. There was written, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And that's the end of my half of the chapter. I think I pass it off to Emily here. Cool. Okay. I'm going to finish this off. Therefore, many of the Jews read this title. For the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priests of the Jews therefore said to Pilate, don't write the king of the Jews, but he said, I am the king of the Jews. (laughs) That's great. (laughs) 
Pilot answered, what I have written, I have written. Oh, he is he's so like, Get off, over okay? this. He's so I'm, mad that he's been involved as much as he has. He's been trying to extricate himself from the beginning. Seriously, it's not going to happen. Oh, boy. I like this. I'd like that he got a final job in there back yeah. to these Pharisees where he's like, "What? Well, yeah, this is what you wanted, right? I wrote it, okay? <laughs> then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart and also the coat. Now, the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. Then they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to decide whose it will be. That the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, they parted my garments among them. For my cloak, they cast lots. What, what is this what from? What a specific piece of scripture. Yeah, and where is that? Where Probably Isaiah or something. Yeah, probably. You know? One of those really yeah. trippy yeah. ones where we're like, what are you, what's happening? Yeah, this is probably the, yeah, all just like in the mix. In the midst of a freaking like fever dream slash like yes. mushroom trip. Okay. Yeah. Therefore, the soldiers did these things, but there were standing by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas. Who? Mary, the wife of Clo- another, yet another Wait, Mary. and Mary Wait, Magdalene. It's a group of I'm three sorry, Marys. I'm sorry. There's three Marys in a row. A group of Marys. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They, Mary's parents named Mary and her sister Mary? Is that what this just said? Oh, you're right. Oh. I didn't think about that. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. No, but what if, what if? Okay, mm-hmm. maybe we're reading the commas wrong. Maybe How am I reading this wrong? Mary, Jesus' mom, his mom's sister, his auntie, Mary, the wife of Clopas. And mm. so maybe there's four women, three of whom are named Mary, and one of them we don't know. And one of them, yeah, that Clopas would be wife. wild if they named both of their daughters Mary. Yeah, that would be weird <laughs> AF. Yeah, that can't, that can't be. Damn. Okay, so a group of four women, three of which are Marys. Okay. It's like a yes. story yeah. problem in a math class. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's good, though, because there are commas. So I, I see what yeah, you're saying. Okay. Therefore, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing there, that must be Mary Magdalene. Oh, oh maybe. That is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. We're usually told yeah. to think that's John, but the fact we just Nobody pointed out that it's all these Marys. Flying crap about John, okay? Okay, hold on, yeah. hold on, though. Keep reading well, because I think we're going to get some pronoun action that may confuse that. <sighs> Therefore, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing there, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to this, the disciple, Behold your mother. What? Keep keep going. Okay. Keep From that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. What? So I think that was him asking this disciple to be like, hey, watch after my mom. Yeah. Okay. okay. But why okay. couldn't the Marys have done that? This isn't, there's no pronoun. Because they're women, obviously. No, it took her to his own home. You were saying that like mm. the disciple that he loved, maybe that was Mary Magdalene, but then it seems to imply I say, based on okay. this one pronoun the, the that he's talking to a dude. Dude. Yes. Yeah. Huh. So many dudes. Okay, that's nice. After this, Jesus, seeing that all things were now finished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I am thirsty. Now a vessel full of vinegar was set there, so they put a sponge full of the vinegar on hyssop and held it at his mouth. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. He bowed his head and gave up his spirit. So he's, he did. Yeah. Again. I'm just going to say, like, when you're when you're walking up to a monastery in Hong Kong and there's, like, different trees. <laughs> like you do. With different, I guess, like, what is it? The Stations of the Cross? Yes. Where is that here? Because I figured if it was going to be anywhere, it would be here. Wait, what do you mean? What do you mean what I mean? Uh, like, What's, What is the question that you're asking? The stations are supposed to be kind of like moments in time, I guess, like where yes. you're supposed to reflect on what Jesus went through, right? But yes. I, I figured that it would be a lot more, that we would be, it would be more brutal and that we would be reflecting on like the intensity of the moment. But here it's just, it's going through the same things that we've been through every other time. I thought if yeah, anything, definitely. John would really get into it. <sighs> sure. But it never did. Like really into the suffering, like like do a, a Mel Gibson style indulgence. He doesn't do a Lord, why have you forsaken me? Sure. Like sure. Mel Gibson took 
all of the Gospels, the worst parts of this story, uh-huh. and then put it into his really like torture porn of a film, okay? Because yeah. that's what it was. Yeah. Yes. And I don't see any of that in any of these. Mm. And you want, so you want more suffering? No, I more. don't. That's the thing. Like, I'm like, I just expected it because again, that's what this, these media outlets are giving me. Mm. And then when it's sure, not yeah. actually here, I'm like, well, what, what is the reasoning behind this? He editorialized like crazy. He didn't have to put all that shit in there and then he did anyways. Sure. I think that to be fair, I guess, to Mel Gibson, not that he deserves it, but uh, Mm. that um, I think that that kind of elaborating was done for many hundreds of years before Mel Gibson about all the suffering. So I don't think he created that. Maybe it's actually less to his credit. He's not even that original. He didn't come up with anything new. But no, no, and I hear you and I hear you, but, but be that as it may, like I, again, I have read all of them now. It is done. As Jesus said, (laughs) it is finished. finished, Okay. (laughs) And yet... We didn't get any of that shit from these writings and I expected more and I didn't get that. And so now I'm just kind of disappointed because I'm like, what is this world coming to that we're like, we got to elaborate so heavily and so disgustingly upon this? Well, a lot has happened in the intervening hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Yes, I know. but, (laughs) But what does that have to do with it? Well, oh gosh, I feel like I could write a whole sermon slash maybe a master's thesis about all of this, but... I think you should. But okay, but think about the fact that like there's a lot of human suffering in the world. I know. Right? Like a lot of human suffering. There's a lot of human suffering in these books that is more... Honestly, honestly, I mean, human suffering... Quite frankly, worse than this. Exactly, that's worse than this, right? And so I think that if you have a faith, a religious tradition that can really play into the suffering of your Messiah. And then it's kind of like, okay, I'm suffering also, just like Christ suffered, just like me, you know, we have this weird affinity in some way, I suppose. And and his suffering was justified. Therefore, maybe my suffering is justified in the grand scheme of things, if that makes sense. I've been drinking straight gin. And so I'm not speaking yeah. quite as eloquently as I would have hoped that I would be, but... No, you're you're doing fine. But I think that's part of it. And, and that sticks with people, right? Yeah. The the like softened like baby version of the crucifixion story doesn't stick with people. Mm. But if you get really gritty into that, that sticks in people's brains. I just don't understand because when people say things like, I am so entrenched in like the word of the Bible, like this is what matters. To me, I'm like, well, then actually read it and actually think about what it says. Mm. Sure. Yeah. See, I'm just saying you're going to open a church, Emily. I got to say my my <laughs> happiest moment in my life up to this moment is when Emily said, like Jesus said, it's finished. <laughs> like that is a, just the fact that Emily's quoting Jesus in making her own points is just priceless. <laughs> Anyways. Let's bring this home. Yeah, let us do that. It is finished. It is finished. He bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Therefore, the Jews, because it was the preparation day, so that the bodies wouldn't remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a special one, asked of Pilate that their leg, look at that's gross, that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away to like get them off of there, I guess. Yeah, so I guess if they're not dead yet, it's like, well, let's break their legs so they can't. They have like the back of a hammer or something. To like get that nail up oh, off of God. there, <laughs> Emily. Well, so what? <laughs> this this was something I did learn about as an elementary school child <sighs> in church. Jesus, and so Jesus was nailed to the cross, right? But normal people now were this just book does tied not say to it. nailed. There's no, only okay. only Mark says nailed. Actually, sure, yeah. But normally, you were tied to it with like rope or. Hemp, probably. Oh, interesting. And there was like a little foot pedestal thing, rest like a little crossbar mm-hmm. thing for you to kind of stand on. Yeah, which and, is weird too. But and it's kind of sloping well, downwards, so it's not easy. Well, basically, the idea was that you could kind of hold yourself up so your arms are not bearing all of your weight. But if you break their legs, they can't stand up, 
And so it actually like puts more force on their arms, which then suffocates them and causes them to yeah, die. It's like an adventure. Way. Your lungs are going to fill with, with fluid and stuff like that. And that right. Was, like it's just... I also don't like that I learned all this when I was like 12. Right. How the... Right. <laughs> what? It's really people, messed up. Yeah, yeah, that is. Good Lord. <laughs> I just learned about that now and I still don't need to know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Ugh. so... But, so like the the sort of theological point of view to put on it is this thing of, yeah, they came along and did this thing, but that they didn't do it to Jesus, which I guess a lot of theologians like to think is significant of like his body was not like defiled in that way or something. So that when he came back to life, his body was still okay. Wait, what do you mean defiled? Like died. Legs like not by broken? having his legs broken. Yeah, that his legs it were just not says broken. says that they broke the leg. It's oh. fine for him to be beaten and oh, like all scarred up and, and right. speared in the side and stuff. But breaking legs, that would be a, a bone too far. I say, well, because oh, I think if you're imagining you come back to life in your same body, you don't get like a brand new fixed body that they're like, scars and bruises can look badass. But if he's walking around with his legs all crooked, that's not as cool a picture. And so we don't want his legs to be broken first. <sighs> Okay, I, I, we need to bring this home. I'm tired of all this body horror I'm gonna talk. Finish. Okay, I'm going to finish. Yeah, okay, okay. All right, all right. So, okay. Therefore, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they didn't break his legs. Okay. However, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear after the fact. That's stupid. Hmm. And immediately blood and water came out. He who has seen is testified and his testimony is, is true. That's interesting also because like, doesn't the body stop coagulating like once? Like, doesn't blood like not really flow after one dies? I don't know that for sure. Huh. I mean, I'm sure some still comes out. Yeah. But it wouldn't be like I mean, You still got out. precious yeah. bodily fluids. You yeah. do, but it's not as, you know. the, the heart isn't pumping. So therefore it's not like yeah. ejecting at the same rate. Yeah. I told you about my picture of this that I drew when I was a kid. What? That, that no. I drew up. No, you didn't. I was didn't. into drawing as a kid and drew a picture of Jesus on the cross with a spear in his side and blood coming out and a soldier. Oh, and your mom like, was all concerned? And my mom had me erase the soldier and the spear part because it okay, was too gross. Okay, because that was the part that was too, too But it's yeah. literally <laughs> right here, so I don't I know, know what... Uh, I mean, it, it was here. <laughs> I don't know. Yep. Okay. Yep. Anyways, he who has seen has testified and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth that you may believe for these things happened, that the scripture might be fulfilled. A bone of him will not be broken. Again, another scripture says they will look on him whom they pierced. I see. So that's why his bones can't be broken. And, he's and that's why he'd be pierced. Yes. Yeah. He. They could have just like given him a a nose piercing. <laughs> sure. After these things. <laughs> oh, after these things, Joseph of Arimathea being a disciple of Jesus. Wait, his daddy? No, different Joseph. Jesus. You know there's only five names, okay? I know, Just gotta but get used to it's it. really annoying. Being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked of Pilate that he might take away Jesus' body. Pilate gave him permission he came, therefore, and took away his body. Oh. Nicodemus. Oh. What? What? Oh, took it away to bury it. Okay, sure. Yeah. Right, I'm right, assuming, right. yeah. Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of mirror, myrrh, myrrh? Myrrh, yes. Myrrh. Correct. <laughs> and aloes, about 100 mm. pounds. Ew. 100 Whoa, pounds? That's what? Some myrrh insane. And aloes. Good Lord. That's so much. I mean, maybe for embalming, you need that much. Do you? God. Like to. Are you putting know. it all up in I don't the know. body? Or I, have I no would idea. assume you're just kind of giving them a Wait rub a down, that or maybe you you're wrapping it along with the bandages. How much? 100 pounds? How much of your body is fluid versus like the rest of it? Well, like mm. two thirds, or like two thirds, right? Of 80%? water? But like you're not just like getting the water out in order to put it full of myrrh, right? 60% of the human body is water. That's 60% of the weight? Well, well yeah, actually, I don't know how they're measuring this by volume or by weight. Sure, I don't know. I'm sorry. 
Well, but no, you can't that's like desiccate the body and then refill it with myrrh. That's that's not how it works. I mean, I'm assuming you're right, but 100 pounds <laughs> is not an insubstantial amount. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Damn. Huh. Okay, anyways. So they took Jesus' body and bound it in linen cloths with the spices as the custom of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. In the garden, a new tomb in which no man had ever yet been laid. Then because of the Jews' preparation day for the tomb was near at hand, they laid Jesus there. And we're going to stop Ooh. until... Next week, we're going to finish this yeah, shit. Yeah, really. Cliffhanger. That's weird, too, that they just go to a garden and they're like, oh, look, a tomb that's never been used. It's open. Cool. Like, Well, it sounds like they were kind of in a rush, you yeah. know, because it was the day of preparation. And so they're like, oh, we'll just put him here. I see. They're like, everyone's busy right now at, at the Passover, yes. so we've got to do it quick. Okay. Yes. Sure, yes. Sure. I'm just going to say the rest of what we have to read is very minimal. It's pretty quick. Sure. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, Maybe we can like have esoteric drunk Bible study at the same time. <laughs> well, next week we're going to have a quiz. Oh, after right. So don't forget You're about right. that. <laughs> <laughs> By number four, we should know those real well. So, uh -huh. although again, although it, they might, yeah, it's a little different for John. Yeah. Yeah, they might try to catch us on all the differences. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. All right. So next week will be the final episode of the Gospels. Wow. Oh my gosh. Final I can't John. We're here. I know. Final John, final Gospel. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to take a week off after that while we prepare our hearts and minds for the book of Acts. Yeah. And uh, and then I guess keep keep on keeping on until we get to the end of this thing. Well, but before we do that, we have a celebration tonight. Oh. Um, I love that. Yes. I love celebrating. Love celebrating. We must... Raise our glasses in thanks, in gratitude, in joyfulness joyful, and gladness. Joyful, Lord, we adore joyful, there. joyful, joyful. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Our newest parishioner, Kelly. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Kelly. Thank you for supporting us in this journey. I mean, without you, we probably couldn't have made it to this pen, pen, John, John, pen, pen, John, yeah. John, 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 pen, gospel pen. We would have stopped actually after this episode, but because of you, <laughs> we're going to keep going. I think we can do it for Kelly. I think we can. <laughs> Just for Kelly. <laughs> you deserve it, Kelly. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All righty, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Bible study today. If you want to join the audience in our live stream shows, follow us on Twitch at Drunk Bible Study or go to drunkbiblestudy.com slash live. If you want even more Drunk Bible Study, including early releases, cocktail recipes, personal toasts on the show, and more, become one of our patrons at patreon.com slash drunkbiblestudy. If you enjoy the show, take a moment to subscribe and write us a nice review on iTunes, letting other people know what you like about it. You can also join fellow listeners in the Drunk Bible Study Fans and Fellowship Facebook group or on our Discord server, discord.drunkbiblestudy.com. Drunk Bible Study is created and produced by Jace Lindgren, Dedeker Winston, and me, Emily Matlack. Our theme song is Book Club by Josh and Anand from their album Home of the The The. For more information, visit us at drunkbiblestudy.com. You know